first I welcome you to my on online class. Uh, dear learners, hope all of you are very well. I am also well. Uh, as you know, we are passing very critical time because of the spread of the coronavirus. Uh, hope all of you are staying at home and uh, and uh, maintaining all the health rules. Okay. Uh, our today's class is uh, for the students of uh, honors first year and second years. Okay, and second year. And uh, it will cover three courses, Advanced Reading and Writing, English Reading Skills, and Introduction to Poetry. Our today's topic is, How Do I Love Thee? You know, this is a very, uh, very nice poem. It's an ex excellent example of passionate love. And it is written by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. You know, Elizabeth Barrett Browning, uh, she was born in 1806, Durham, England. And uh, she died in 1861, Florence, Italy. Uh, her father's name was Edward Barrett Moulton. Mother's name was Mary Graham Clark. Uh, you know, uh, she was uh, she was uh, 12 of her you know um, of her siblings. Uh, she she led a very secluded life, and from her early childhood, she was very you know sick. Okay, so because of her sickness. She has an unquenchable trust for uh, reading books, and she, and you know uh, she she doesn't she didn't have any institutional education, but she was you know uh, taught by her tutors at home. Uh, she knew you know Greek, Hebrew, um, philosophy, uh, you know history, and uh, and you know she, classical and she has and she also learned classical literatures literature and and uh, we we come to know that uh, uh, our father was very much conservative and you know protective also uh, he never wanted her to uh, to get married to get married uh, when she was uh, 31 years old uh, you know she has a long ailment and uh, uh, and then throughout her life she she had to take opium uh, and you know uh, she first met, you know, uh, in 1844, uh, Robert Browning wrote to her, appreciating her poems, and she wrote poems, and Robert Browning appreciated her, and in 1846, um, uh, you know, they, uh, they got married, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, before their marriage, they, they had total 92 meetings, and they had, uh, you know, 572 letters and they wrote to each other and um, from I uh, you know after their marriage after their marriage uh, you know uh, they went to Italy and spent their life there so uh, before you know going to the text I, I hope that all of you will uh, you will bring the text you know uh, because uh, I will first of all I will read out the poems I will um, explain the lines and uh, and I will discuss the genre, uh, all these things. Okay, so let us uh, get ready. Now let us uh, go to the poem. Uh, here, uh, I, first of all, I am reading out the poem. Listen very attentively. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach. So, in the first line, you know, the poet poses a question: How do I love thee? This is you can you can uh, call it uh, you know apostrophe. Someone apostrophe means when someone is addressed. So here he say she says, "Let me count the ways." She see she wants to measure her love. I love thee to the depth and breadth. And height, my soul can reach. It's an imaginative world. Her love is surpasses or go beyond the physical limit of the world. It is limitless. It cannot be measured from the depth or breadth or height. When failing out of sight for the ends of being an ideal grace, you know. For the ends of being an ideal grace. 
God's creation has no limits. It is endless, it's limitless, boundless. So where the creation ends, where the creation ends, our love starts. So, you know, it's, a, it's a really very hyperbolic, it's very exaggerated, and it is basic, it is it's almost possible in imaginative world. Okay. I love thee to the level of every day's most quite end. So the you know is poetic use, it indicates you. I love thee to the level of every day's most quite neat. It indicates the urgency of things. Every day for our living we need some things without which we can't live. So she loves him to the every day is quite neat things. It's inseparable things by sun and candlelight. Symbolic thing, sun and candlelight. Sun indicates day and candlelight indicates night. So she loves her lover with most wanted things and like the day and night, which without which we cannot you know, imagine our life. I love thee free as men strive for right. She thinks that she thinks her love is our birthright. People always struggle or you know struggle for right. They uh, you know they have they have to go through several you know uh, struggles to achieve their right. She thinks to love her lover is a birthright and she loves him free. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. Her love is very pure, very innocent. It is, you know, uh, it is, and, and it doesn't, she doesn't expect any return, any praise. So, her, she is very, you know, her love is, you know, it is very pure and it, it doesn't need any uh, praise or, you know, returns. I love thee with the passion I put to use in my old griefs and with my childhood faith. She says that she, uh, she loved him with that kind of passion that she used to pay in her old griefs. And with my childhood faith, you know, children, whatever they believe, they believe blindly. They don't have any, you know, uh, what can I say, any uh, excuse or artificial or superficial something. What they believe, they believe genuinely. They believe purely. So she loved or she loves her lover. Or she loves her lover with her childhood faith, not the not her adulthood faith. It's a childhood faith. So we see how much she loves her lover. Okay. Then. Okay. Now come to the next lines. I love thee with the love I seem to lose with my lost saints. She loved her beloved or her lover with that kind of love that she used to have in her lost saints, you know. When she was, you know, in her tender age, she has a blind faith in her, in her saints. As she grew up, she, her faith faded away. So she loved her lover with the love that she used to have for her lost saints. So see how much, you know, genuine love it is. I love thee with the great smiles, tears, and all of my life. And so these are the essential parts of life. I love thee with the breath, with the breath, you know, without breath, we can't live. 
it's an inseparable part of our life. You know, without oxygen, we cannot live. So she loves her lover with the breath, smiles, tears, and all of my life. You know, smile and tears. These are the parts of uh, you know parts of uh, parts of a human being. Without these, a human being can't exist. So she loves her lover with these essential parts, with these inseparable parts. So this love cannot be, you know, broken, cannot be faded away. Uh, so then she says, and if God choose, I shall, but love thee better after death. Very excellent line. What, he say, what she says that if God chooses, she will love her lover better than this world. And after her death, she will love him more profoundly than before. So uh, from the you know, poem, we, we have come to know, this is a passionate love poem. The main theme of the poem is love. It is a sonnet. Uh, it has ambic pentameter lines. You know, a sonnet is 14 uh, ambic pentameter lines, and it is not exceptional. And uh, it, it followed Petrarchan style. It has, you know, the first eight lines we can call octave, and the last six lines we can call sister. And in the first eight lines, the you know uh, the idea is introduced, and the last on uh, the in the last six lines, uh, you know, there is a conclusion. There is a conclusion, uh, and there is a solution. Okay, so. Uh, I can say that, that the main theme of the poem is love. The tone is very passionate. Tone may be different. It may be passionate, it may be serious, it may be philosophical, it may be ironic, or like this. So this, the tone of this poem is very passionate. And uh, here we find imagery. That is nice imagery, you know. The poem is full of imagery. Okay? And uh, another thing is, uh, in this poem, mm. we see the poet, uh, she is very, uh, she uses hyperboles or exaggeration to express her love. She thinks that she has mysterious power to measure her love. It is not possible to measure in, uh, you know, in physical world. It is just, it is just possible in, in imaginative world. So, uh, another thing is, whenever uh, in advanced reading and writing, you have a poem, uh, which is for the second year, and uh, in, in English reading skill, uh, the student uh, have you know uh, the, a poem uh, which contains fifty marks. So. Before answering the questions, you have to read the poem thoroughly. You have to understand the poem very, you know, critically. And then, you know, uh, you have to answer the questions. And you must read the questions very attentively. What the questions want. Okay? Sometimes the poem, you know, it comes from the text. And sometimes it doesn't come from the text. It is unknown. So, uh, as it contains, uh, you know, use marks, so you have to be very serious. So, you have to know the genre, the structures, uh, the similes, metaphors, I uh, know, the literary terms. In, in this poem, we also find some literary terms like simile. And you know what is simile. In the earlier class, I discussed what is simile, what is metaphor, what is conceit. What is hyperbole? What is personification? What is what is imagery? Okay, so I hope if you follow the earlier classes, this will be very easy for you. Okay, so I will stop here today and see you in the next class. Okay, thank you very much.